Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Professor Doretta. First of all, I would like to share with you why the development of this final project have been kind of hard for me. I used to think that great educators were who knows pretty well the content. I mean, knowledgeable educators. But throughout the development of this project, I realized that being knowledgeable does not become in a great educator. It does become in an expert. What I become in a great educator is the proper handle of planification and tools in order to transmit the information in the better way. Then, I'm going to apply what I learned in this methods class and the development of this project with you. The first thing I would like to do is describe my five critical concepts. Then I'm going to overview my lesson plan and explain just a little bit why I choose trifle strategy uh, to embody my topic. And then I'm going to model the phase of activation, the trifle strategy. And finally, I'm going to conclude it with some reflections that I gained uh, throughout this course. First, I picked up the Russian second language acquisition theory because most of all the strategies we have learned here are based on in uh, the Russian second acquisition theory. But in order to have a better understanding about crushing second language acquisition theory, we have to overview five critical concepts which defined his theory. The first one is acquisition learning hypothesis. A person can't not learn by grammar alone. Crushing make a differentiation between acquisition and learning. Acquisition is an unconscious process, and while learning is conscious cognitive process. Therefore, both then need different educational strategies to be enhanced. The second one is monitor hypothesis. Uses is the only path to fluence. Krashen said that language learner, the only way that a language learner gains fluency is through acquiring a language. That is why educators must provide a school environment who encourage students to hear and use the language. The next concept is natural order hypothesis. Errors are normal and often disappear of their own. Educators must avoid to correct the students all the time in order to a students can produce the language in a normal way. The next one is input hypothesis. Learners need to receive a comprehensible input as they acquire literacy. Responsive educators must focus on the, the instruction and a student's understanding. It doesn't matter if we provide information that the students don't understand, but if they understand what they are learning, they are going to be able to use it. And the final concept is affected filter. It's hard to learn when you are scared. That means that responsive educators must provide a good class climate in order to enhance a student's participation and learning.
The second thing of my main point, I would like to show you the trifle strategy. I chose this strategy because it fitted perfectly with my objective of my class. The objective of my class is the students gain the capacity of talking of their own daily routines. Then, in this phase of connections, I'm going to ignite a student's background knowledge. In this phase of connections, I'm going to provide new information, examples, reading, and audio as instruments that are going to uh, help students to write a summary. Right away, I'm going to describe my lesson plan. It's just an overview, overview of my lesson plan. My lesson plan is addressed of uh, 10 graders. We are going to stimulate the four uh, learning uh, language skills, like listening, writing, speaking, and reading. Here we can notice that the majority of population of my students in this class is 25 students in early production stage. That means we have to figure out how to work with uh, this population. The objective of my class, uh, as I said before, is that students can gain the capacity to describe their own daily routines. Here we have the objective or uh, language objectives, the listening, the reading, the writing. And right now, I'm going to model my phase of activation of the trifle strategy. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Fine. OK. The topic of our class today is daily routines. The objective is, is that you are going to be able to write a short summary about your own daily routines. The first thing we are going to do is Think about what does mean for you daily routines. After that, we are going to listen and read uh, some examples about Brian daily routines in order to be able to write a short summary. But the first thing, please stand up. OK. Links. Pick paper, any paper. Okay. Just one. Just one. <laughs> Please open your papers. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Do we have to open? Yes. Please. Open your papers. What animal you are? <laughs> Dog. Okay. You are going to make the noise and find your group. Noise? Yes. For example. Yeah. For example, you are a monkey. Okay. With a monkey. Who's monkey too? Yeah. Okay. Please. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, please. Find your find your group. 
Okay. Please come back to your table in your groups. Come back to your tables in your groups. Okay. Which group is here? Monkeys. Here you are. Here you are. Can we please to hand out? Do you have a next one? Yep. Our topic uh, of today is daily routines. You are going to write here the topic, please. Daily routines. And the question is, what has come into your mind when you hear daily routines? What has come into your mind? Everyday activity. OK. Take a shower. OK. OK. And the sticky notes are going to give you you are going to draw out of write whatever idea you have when you hear the daily routines. For example, I'm going to tell you daily maybe means date and routines, I don't know, maybe route or maybe activities you do every day. Please, in your sticky notes, you can write or draw your ideas. Whatever we want, right? Yes. Draw or write? Whatever you want. What you done? Good. Uh, somebody. It's hard reading a book. Mm -hmm. mm. Good activity. Mm -hmm. I yeah, man. Because I love showers. Okay. You love showers? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you do in this table? Facebook. Facebook. Oh. <laughs> Good. Okay, then you are going to share and explain your drawings with a classmate. But let's do something. For example, stand up. Now you are going to share your ideas, but cats are going to find a dog and monkeys are going to fight a horse. Yes. But you have to make the noise. Yeah. Something else, please. Students, the students, please, something else. <laughs> students, please, something else. If you feel like you can't explain in English, please do it. But if you have to explain it very well and you don't feel like you can do it in English, use Spanish. Is okay? It doesn't matter.
about how the phase of activation in trifold works. And concluding, I would like to share some insights I gained throughout this maths class. I learned that all educational efforts must be centered in the students. We are no longer the teacher who are the center of our class. I learned that the student's background knowledge is relevant in the learning process to generate the strong connections between what the students already know and with the new information providing class. I learned that instructions must be addressed toward the students' content understanding and independently of the language competence of the students. Also, I learned that commitment state is part of the learning process. Educators must not correct the students all the time. In order to encourage the students to advance at the next level of the language. I have learned many educational tools or strategies that are going to lead my professional practice, my professional practice in the future. I would like to say the better tools you have, the better the results you are going to get. And finally, in this course I have changed my point of view about education. I have learned that students are not anti basal that teacher must fill out. Thank you. <laughs> 